right. So uh, why don't you open this one? I opened the last one. I opened the last one. one. You ended the last one. I, I did? opened the last one. I yes. can't even remember anymore. All right. <laughs> What's up, Space Rangers? That's right. That's why I said gonna Space Rangers. I'm going to make it stick. What's up, Space Rangers? It's Mike. It's Tony. And this is the Useless Podcast. And this week, we're going to talk about controls. We got a lot of questions about the sort of hows and whys of, of why controls in games end up the way they do. And I thought this might be a good sort of just general T- talking point for us yeah yeah and we could just start uh so some of the specific questions we got were uh how do you pick which buttons go where fist fights fist fights yep that usually does break down the fist <laughs> fights eventually right uh what have you ever had a time where you totally disagreed with somebody about what the control should be Not like what I buttons i'm sure should i have it's something that i can recall though um I tend to not be as opinionated on it as a lot of other people, so I can I kind of just sort of let them take the lead a lot of the time, and very rarely it gets personal. It really with does. controls, yeah. like, and uh, I mean, usually what happens is you try the controls out at a user test. You do like an A B test, and then one of them floats to the top. Right. Uh, but uh, it's uh, like a lot of people ask, why not just have multiple control schemes? That's a good question. And uh, the answer is you should. Yep. You should Absolutely. have multiple control schemes. I support schemes. it 100%. I think everybody supports it 100%. But well, why, you would why be don't surprised. Ga- why don't games have it, Tony? It's work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, the thing yeah. about it is, and this was a, a thing that was kind of in the news a while ago, is that uh, <clears throat> it's a terrible excuse, but it's a reality that sometimes there's a feature that is very, would be very, very good to have. But when it comes down to it, they don't have time and it's such a horrible thing to say for something like controls which would be such a huge benefit especially for people with disabilities who can't use normal controllers and stuff like that but sometimes when you say we just don't have time for it that that's what they mean like they literally don't have the time for it and even though it sucks to hear sometimes that's the reality of the way things are well what usually happens is the user interfaces go in really late Mm -hmm. right and someone would have to write a user interface for changing all the controls. Right. And usually, since that's an optional feature, right, it's at the bottom of somebody's list. And the bottom of lists tend to fall off when you're after beta, you know? And, right. uh, I mean, I, is, has this been the case at every company you've worked at that the UI just sort of languishes until the end? Because that seems to be the case wherever a I go. A lot of the times it does. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times it's a problem. I mean, the other problem was with the PS2, and I remember there was a lot of sort of arguing about this before. It's not so much a problem now, but for the PS2, like, the two back uh, shoulder buttons were analog, yeah. and everything else was a digital right. press. And so you would want to put some sort of weird analog thing down on those back buttons, and then the rest is digital, and then all of a sudden the code that you have that's using the analog stuff on the back doesn't work when you just do a full right because you didn't swap. necessarily write it right 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 to go either way but on the newer systems there's so much more analog buttons and all sorts of other stuff that i mean honestly on the new ps4 update apparently when there, there's a system wide option now to just do remapping to remap the controls on your own. oh wow like you can just go into the, from the home menu it really should be system-wide option. Like, that's one of those things that the operating system really could take from you. And right. it would probably be better for everybody because then all the games would have it. Which it looks like what they're doing, which yeah. is exactly what, exactly what is needed, yeah. to be honest. But I can understand the desire to do more sort of controller remapping in individual games. And I, I understand it, and I get it, and I think it's absolutely something worth doing. But the reality is that there's not really a lot of time for that kind of stuff. It's usually fairly low priority whether it should be higher priority is a completely different discussion but the reality of the situation is it tends to be a low priority issue and so instead because the most high priority issues tend to be a this is incredibly not fun right or b this makes the game not work well i mean so here's the thing and this is may, this may be a little bit too behind the curtains about it but the reality of working on a game is when you're working on a game with a publisher you have a contract 
and you have things that you need to deliver to the publisher on a regular schedule right. to honor the contract. They're, they're called milestones in case right. we talk about them later. And uh, very rarely in the contract is it going to say remappable controls. Yes, that's true. There's... So the highest priority stuff is what's on the piece of paper that needs to get delivered. What, what in your complete foolishness and naivete you promised them when they gave you money. Right. Those things need to be in so that they'll pay you right yeah. so you don't go out of business so you don't go out of business so that's always priority one yeah that's priority. then priority two is all of the features that you're forced to do by the platforms mm-hmm. right if you release on xbox you have to do achievements you have to do all you know uh steam right i don't know if, how much of their features they force but there are lots of platform specific features uh and that stuff just you, you have to do it you don't have a choice you can't release on a microsoft platform Without achievements. Right. You know? And then after that, you have make the game good. Yes, and fun. Right. right? Good yeah. and fun. And then after you get those three things done, then you get remappable controls, sort of accessibility issues, usability issues. Sort more of polish. More polish. Yeah. And sometimes you don't have a lot of room for tier four stuff. Yeah. Sometimes you can't even get past tier two. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, and... Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that happens post beta on a game that is more crucial than the entire time leading up to beta. Right. right. In terms of how fun the game is, how good it is, how how smooth the experience feels playing with it. There are a lot of things that happen post beta that is why those things are in there in the first place, right? And if UI is one of the things that gets pushed off, and it can't be done early because you don't know what UI you need yet. Well, that's the thing is, right? UI is also very rarely built into the contract. And, yeah, or the engine for that matter. Right. Like, very rarely is one of your early deliverables going to say, must have a functioning UI or else we don't pay you. Right. Yeah. So, that's, obviously, that's going to be wait. That's going to wait. Because, that's going to be a later milestone when they right. say, all of UI has to be in now. Right. You know? That's usually beta, actually. Right. Uh, because, uh, uh, like, I remember when we were working at Insomniac and, at, like, before beta, the conversations that I would have with people would be completely different mm-hmm. after beta. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, so before beta, you have conversations about what would be awesome to have. Mm-hmm. After beta, you have conversations about what this fucking game can ship with. Right. And they're two incredibly different Right. Goals. Well, there's also a different tone. Like before beta, the tone when you pitch an idea is, do you think you can pull this off? Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. beta, you have somebody telling you, you can't pull this off. Yeah, that's that's true. And usually a producer. Right. So it's always a so, so inviting an environment pre-beta. Post-beta, it's all about reality check. This is how much time is left. This is how much needs to be done. And yet, somehow, really, really big things get in after beta that don't need to. Right. It always happens. Right. And uh, generally when it happens and when you see it, it's for the better. Right. But if everybody did that, it would be awful. Right. Right? Like, I'm trying to think of an example of something that went in after beta that was just so super important but probably shouldn't have been done in the first place. They're usually little juntas, right? Like five or six people who thought that this feature should exist all get together and stay late an extra four nights and then make a thing, right? There is a story about uh, the Ratchet multiplayer. Oh, right. One day, everybody just came into work. And for about a year, we had eight-person multiplayer. And then one day, everybody came into work. And like, hey, we have 10-player multiplayer now. And everyone's like, <laughs> what? Yes. Even the designers didn't know it was going to happen. All the levels were designed for eight people. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, we've got it now. Sorry. Yeah. Make it all work. I did it. It was just there yeah. one day. And you're like, how did that happen? And it was just, you know. The, the elves came in in the night. <laughs> exactly. They deposited the, multi- the t- no extra two players. I mean, there were discussions. And all the discussions previously had been like, never. We can't do it. Can't be, it can't be done. And then it got done. And since it was done, it went in the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
I think what what exists is probably a better arbiter of what will be in the game than you know what should exist. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was pretty ballsy to put an extra two <laughs> players in a multiplayer mode overnight. I'm trying to think if there's anything I did that I wasn't supposed to do at the last minute. I mean, I know there are, but they're all much smaller than that, right? It's not. I added an entire feature overnight. <laughs> it's usually like, well, I realized I wasn't supposed to work on C and D bugs, but I put the effect on that lamp anyway. Mm -hmm. But all of those things are a fraction of the work of making a new UI because I, I've never, I've worked with many UI systems and they're all universally terrible. And the best UI system I've ever worked with, which is pretty good, Still, it's a huge pain in the ass <laughs> to make UIs. It just sucks. It's really hard. It's time-consuming work as well. Yeah, because it's it's a whole art form in and of itself that deserves enough people dedicated to it. Like WoW has an entire team dedicated to the UI, and that's how it should be. But, you know, not every game has a budget like WoW. Very few games do. And not every company is Blizzard. Only one company is. Yes. Blizzard is the exception that proves the rule in a lot of cases. Yeah. So, uh -huh. I mean, the, the, and, and that's the thing. Of, and that's not even just about accessibility. Like, when I hear somebody talk about how they don't have time for something that a lot of people want, and they catch a lot of flack for it, there's a part of me that's always, like, a little bit sympathetic. Because I get it. Right. But I also understand how shitty it is to hear that as an excuse. Yeah. Right. Well, the, like, uh... uh that's not an excuse you get to give as somebody selling something. Right, yes, right? absolutely. Uh, that's just not a valid excuse, even though it's a completely valid reason that a thing happened. You're not going to say, please excuse me for this because... I don't have I'm enough an, time. Yeah, because I ran out of time because I scheduled poorly. Right. Right. Poor me. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, so it's really, especially with these things that really would be, and everybody thinks are hugely important, like remappable controls. Uh-huh. This is a small aside, and I'm not sure how... Uh how relevant it is, but it does remind me that uh, you and I used to work the Booth City 3 yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. a bit. And uh, the amount of talks you have to sit through of people telling you all the things you're not allowed to say to right. people at E3. The media training. Is astounding. It's astounding how much stuff they tell you you're not supposed to talk about yeah. to other people. Oh, yeah. I... I uh... I remember one time I had a conversation with a journalist about it and I mentioned media training and he just got so interested. He was just like, they train you how to talk to us? Like, what do they think we are, sharks? And so I sort of talked him through how media training works, but it, it's just, I know what you mean. Like, there's always the person who says, all right, this is what we're talking about. These thousand things are what we're not talking about. Just stick to the message, people. And what's funnier is that that list of things you're not supposed to talk about just gets longer and longer and longer. Well, the more controversies there are, the longer that media training session gets. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. I kind of, I'm kind of interested to see what, what a major studio media training would look like. It's the same at this point. It's still the same. It's, it's, uh, you know, you, you, uh, everybody gets called into a conference room. You spend a couple hours talking about it with the marketing people and then you're done. And it all makes it all makes sense, right? Like nothing that they're saying is, you know, they're like, so we want to put, we want to give this feature to Game Informer, so please don't give it out ahead of that because then we they have no reason to give us a cover, right? Stuff like that. Uh, and uh, you know, I, okay, fine, I don't want to ruin our chances at getting a cover, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. It's pretty simple. I mean, I suppose nowadays they're like. Don't say anything that makes you or your employer look like a huge asshole. I want to, if I, if I was in charge, I would run through a PowerPoint presentation and just bring up controversy. Oh, every single controversy. Something that somebody said at E3. Like, that's don't the, be this guy. Next slide. Don't be this guy. That's the red asphalt version of <laughs> media training. <laughs> Blood on the highway. Uh if media training was like driver's training. Right, exactly. You know? um, let's see. Uh, the One of the other things that somebody asked about controls was uh, like those rules of thumb that we've come up with where sure this might not be appropriate in every game we make, but generally when I think of a cancel button, I put it on circle. 
or wherever mm-hmm. circle is on that controller, right? Or B, if it's an Xbox controller, you know, or a menu button goes on the upper button, the north well, there, button. There was, um, I remember, I think part of the PlayStation 2 TRC was that triangle had to be canceled. It sort of was. It was the general practice, but we didn't have to do it. Okay. Because we were given an exception. Right. Yeah. But generally speaking, it was in there. And the TRC, for anybody who doesn't know, it's the the checklist of terms and requirements, the terms and requirements checklist. It's every publisher has one of these where before you can ship your game on their platform, they require you to follow all of these rules. Like, for example, your game is not allowed to crash. Your game is not allowed to corrupt the user's system and make it unplayable. You know, your, your game is not, silly, stupid things like, oh, you, your game has to actually be finishable. Whenever you use the word PlayStation, you have to have the little TM. The little TM. You, only certain logos. Uh-huh. You know, can't use the PlayStation Family logo unless you're rated this. You can right. only use the yeah. Make, the, your save message has to say be phrased in this way to make sure that they well, yeah. Your button icons have to be a certain size and visibility, and mm-hmm. they have to look correct. Right. On on the Wii, there were only certain Wii remote images you could use. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so there's all these checklists. I mean, the stuff we were talking about about games requiring achievements that's in the TRC, you know, or Nintendo calls it lot check. I don't remember what Xbox calls it. Just know. submission, yeah. maybe, or, or, but uh, it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. TRG might actually. And so there was, I mean, there is some, some of those technical, some of those things are the confirm buttons button should be this. Yeah. The cancel button should be this. So some of those things are set in stone by the platform holder. That's how some of the buttons get chosen, but other buttons, not so much. Like you were talking about the analog buttons, right? Like some things are just better for those. Well, the thing, of, uh, the thing that's funny is that when we started making games, uh, like at this point when you make a game, universally, uh, when you're making a shooter, fire button is the right trigger. Pretty much, yeah. That's universal. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't the case when we were making games. No. no. Because there was only one trigger button on the PlayStation 1 controller. Right. And really, uh, GoldenEye was the first one to use a trigger Right, it was, for it was the Z trigger. Pretty, pretty yeah. much. I mean, other games had done it, but they were the big one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, because the N64 just had the Z trigger. Yeah, they had it like a gun sort of underneath the controller. And then that was really popular. So I can see why they'd want to have the same sort of feeling with a, uh, the shoulder button. Right. But there were some, you would get debates about whether the fire button should be on the left trigger. Or a face button. Or a face button. Or a face button. Yeah. Oh, my God. I would never think of putting fire on a face button. But because some people feel that that was better. Or yeah. It, in, I might have been one of those people back point, then. At this point, now it's a standard, right? Yeah. If you're going to put a fire button, you put it on the trigger. Um, that was one of the cats. I'll say that again. At this point, it's a standard. If you're going to make a fire button, you're going to put it on the trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's just where they go now. But it was the Wild West at a point, right, <laughs> where everybody's trying to sort of develop the industry standard. And you're like, you know what? I'm left-handed. I like my fire trigger up here. Yeah. Like, well... Too bad. Well, and the the operating systems on the consoles didn't do as much to help you. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you if you wanted voice chat, you had to make your own damn voice chat. Right. Right. If you wanted and any of these kind of features that get packaged into the consoles, there wasn't really a standard for a lot of that stuff simply because it wasn't being done for you. Well, then I, when Xbox Live came around, that changed a lot. Oh, yeah. They, their, their system was so much friendlier in that way, just yeah. for developers. Yeah. But we didn't have Xbox Live on the PlayStation Not, 2. Yeah. And when, we, <laughs> and when we started, I don't think the Xbox was even out when we first... No, it was out. Not the... Th- 360, the 360 no. 360 yeah, wasn't, yeah. but the... Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the... And their operating system was more advanced, for sure, than the PlayStation or the... Like, it did a lot of stuff for you. Yeah. But, uh, I, you know, I, uh, I only worked for a, a but like month we talked or two the, on we talked about In the last episode, we were talking about living in, like, a post-Halo world and, like, a post, you know... Right, yeah. And, for controls, it's even more so. And for controls and a lot of those features, living in a post Xbox Live world, right, it was really different. Yeah. And I, even then, the other thing about controls, it's that's, I mean, it's a huge headache. That thankfully we haven't had to deal with too much. Is cross cross platform. Yes. Oh my God. Cross platform controls are a pain in the ass. <laughs> Right. Especially when you were going, like, going from yeah, PlayStation imagine, to Xbox, that's one thing. Imagine going from Xbox to Wii. Yeah. Oh. It's like, what do you, It's I like, mean, I have 12 buttons, now I have three buttons. Right. I can imagine, like, all the fights that would break out over controls already. Yes. And then when you have to, like, find a good control mapping 
to go to the other. Oh, it's that just, can work on the Wii U tablet or the regular controller yeah. or the yeah, or the Connect. Or the Connect. I that, that does. There's not a lot of multiple supports between controller and Connect. But and, honestly, and we're not gonna. I, I don't want to get into this too much because this is actually something that I do feel strongly about. But if you're making games for the Wii, you're never gonna have a more intense fight than the waggle fight. Oh God. Working on Spyborgs, man, we would have the waggle fight every week. Yeah. Sometimes more than once a week. Because you you hated waggle. I'm not a fan of waggle. You controls. hated it. Like, there were some instances I remember you liking where it was used with respect. But generally, you didn't like things just making you waggle. No. I don't, think, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a very accurate control scheme. Capcom really liked the waggle, though. They really liked the waggle. We got a lot of... Why are we making a Wii game if we don't waggle everywhere? Yeah. And the answer to the question was because it's the most popular platform and we're going to make more money that way. But right, the way they asked it made it not seem that, that was the answer to the question. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh man, plat- cross-platform controls. I remember um, on the first Skylanders game, we had made that game as a Wii exclusive. And then uh, we, the game got pushed a year and, and given more money. And part of the deal was for the extra year, we would also do an Xbox port and a PlayStation port, right? And uh, man, up scaling the controls from a, such a small number of buttons to a bigger button, you'd think that would be easier. It was not. <laughs> oh my God. Just the religious fights you get into with people over where these buttons should go. And so in the end, we just had functions going on multiple buttons, right? Because we had buttons to spare and nobody could agree. Right. So that was almost worse going upwards than going downwards. Because going downwards, at least you have some semblance of what your hands are used to, right? Going upwards, it's just like, I don't know how to play my own game anymore. Right. Uh, anything else you want to say about controls? I mean, we're, we did pretty well. I, I think that's pretty good. All right. Well, we, uh, 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 do you well, want to do want a mailbag? To, if you want to think of a capper, or we can do mailbag. We can do mailbag as a okay. separate thing. Uh, so let's... Play the jingle. Let's open up the mailbag. Well, jiggle time. Mailbag, mailbag, everybody's got a mailbag. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Let's, let's next time we'll do some mailbag. Okay. So. So that's about guess, it. I mean, we don't really have an ending. So we're just going to end it. Yeah. Bye. The, the end. See you next time. I'm Tony. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Mike, if you didn't know that already. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the end. Still listening? I hope you're not still listening. We're not. We're not going to talk about anything interesting anymore. No, I it, mean this is all just. It's over. Nonsense at this point. There's, I mean, there, I don't understand why you would be listening. I mean, just because the, the YouTube bar says that it's not done, I mean, it's done. Yeah, this is the part in other people's videos where they'd be asking for subscriptions and stuff. But we're not going to do that. No, we don't. Because that's about not. That. That's not us. Yeah, I don't yeah. want. No, I don't. I don't even really want more subscribers. More subscribers are for uh, lazy people. Yeah. yeah, people who court internet fame. I'm not courting internet fame. No, okay, let's just for a second. Internet fame sounds like the worst thing. <laughs> because internet fame is essentially the same thing as abuse. Yes. Right? So why would I want to be internet famous? Yeah. Well, internet fame is um, a few people that like you and a lot of people that hate you. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's internet fame. You're it's, right. Yeah, there's, there's, you have a nice little echo chamber. Without the money that comes from normal fame. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what you do as long as everybody sees you doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's not my thing. You don't get a lot of endorsements from internet fame. Oh, uh, yeah. Some people do. Yeah, some people. Not everybody. Not a lot of people. Not a lot of people, but yeah. It takes a level of internet fame. That's true. It's to the point where, you know, like everybody's seen you doing something embarrassing on the internet and then somebody wants to make a t-shirt out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, people are always like, uh. They're, they're looking at everything that you say, trying to pick it apart, trying to find something that you did wrong. Yeah. And I said a lot of things wrong in my life. You can't go to the supermarket without somebody looking at you and being like, isn't that that Star Wars kid with the lightsaber? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if somebody was to try to pick... Trouble. It just one, one off little yeah. out of context it, thing? I'm done. Don't give him ideas. It's, o- it's over for me. Don't, don't, sh- don't throw that into the internet. That'll come back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, don't subscribe. Yeah, if if you already subscribed, uh, well, I'm not gonna say unsubscribe because then you won't. No, I appreciate know. if you did it yeah. on your own 
free will. You're free to do it. You're an incredibly nice person for doing that. We're not going to stop you. We're not no. going to take off this description button. And we're not offended by it. I mean, yeah. I'm slightly complimented by it when it happens. Yeah, do your thing. Because it's like, really? That person wants to hear what I have to say? Because... Don't I... do it for us. Do it for you. Yeah. If you're going to subscribe, do it for you. Yeah. Make it easier, make it easier in your life. If you want to find out when the next video is posted, that's what the subscribe button is there for. Click that button if you think your heart will be filled with love. Right. Yeah. Just know it doesn't make me feel good. No. No. It's the opposite of what Tony wants. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I endure subscribers. Exactly. I don't, I don't seek them out. You took a break from Twitter, and when you came back, you had more subscribers than you had yeah. gotten from being on Twitter. Yeah. I think uh, and I, I that's tweeting, the way you like it. I right? started tweeting again, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose subscribers. <laughs> and I don't understand how that works. It can't be a bad thing. No, I mean, that's yeah. what I want. Yeah. Just... Right? I mean, I don't want somebody following me and then realizing that they don't like the stupid crap I talk about and then continuing to follow me to not hurt my feelings. Seriously, how much can anyone listen to one man talk about Captain America anyway? Well... I mean, that's probably the most interesting thing I talk about. Captain America. More Captain America. I've been talking America. a lot about Spider-Man recently, too. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What about Spider-Man? I like Spider-Man. I yeah? think he's good. He's a good, he's a good superhero. Yeah. That's not controversial. I mean, he's certainly one of the most popular ones. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Some, I mean, some poor bastard is just going to look at the amount of time left on this YouTube video and think it's going to get interesting at some point. Yeah. And it's not. No. We're done talking about... We've been done for minutes. Yeah. Minutes and minutes and minutes. But you're still here. It's yeah. good on you. I honestly don't know why we're still talking. Uh, I mean, I just want to get that, that bar as long as possible. Yeah. So that you think you, you got your money's worth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, somebody, somebody's going to be sitting here listening to this and just and wonder why. And I, I, I ask the question to you as well. Why are Why you, are you still here? The relevant thing, the relevant part of this podcast to you is is done yeah we we you maybe it's because we didn't sign off properly nah i don't know they maybe they didn't get the closure that they needed and they're hoping for more closure i guess but you don't want to give them closure. it's not it's not, it's not they're not gonna, gonna get that either we told you earlier that there's no ending at the end yeah. of this and the sign so off the sign off happened if we were to do the sign off now we would make ourselves into liars we would look like cowards cowards and uh lacking conviction yes oh uh, weak yeah mm -hmm. Morally, moral turpitude. It's not happening. Yeah, no. I'm not going to look weak on the internet. Oh, man. That would invite more internet fame slash abuse. Yeah, exactly. Once they know you're weak on the internet, I mean... It's like sharks with blood in the water. Right, exactly. Da -dum, da -dum. Yeah. So, I mean, you should just stop. Da -dum, turn, da -dum. Off the, turn off the video at this point. Yeah. Or the audio if you're or listening the on SoundCloud. Like, there's nothing here. I mean... I'm just going to stop talking now, I think. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Maybe have some white noise just just yeah, just at the end. That'd be good.